Hey everybody, it's Kristen here from Magoosh, and on this episode of Tuesday CT, we are talking about something super important, and that is the math formulas that you absolutely have to know for the ACT. Now, unlike the SAT, the ACT doesn't give you a list of formulas at the beginning of the math section for you to use, which means you need to have certain things memorized, and we're going to talk about a few of the things you absolutely must know that are going to come up on basically every single ACT. And the first one of those things is how to find the average, your formula for finding the average of a group of things. Now, most of the time in school, you tend to learn this equation as the average equals the sum divided by the number of things. But most of the time on both the SAT and the ACT, they're not actually going to give you the sum, the number of things. They're going to give you the average. They're going to switch it up on you and make it a little bit harder for you. And so that's why I like this equation, not only because it is a nice little mnemonic to remember, SAT equally works for the SAT or the ACT, but because it helps set up that equation in a way that's going to help you. So for example, you might see a problem such as the average weight of Tony, Susan, and Bob is 163 pounds and ask you to find what their total weight is. And you may look at that and say like, huh, because it's not what you're used to, but if you just plug that into this equation, and you say the average is 163 and you know you have three things and boom, you have the sum of their weights right there all ready for you. So make sure you know how to calculate averages and sum the things, things like that in that equation. The second thing that you need to definitely know is how to find the slope. You're definitely going to see at least one question on the test that's going to ask you to find the slope. And the two things to remember, depending on whether or not you're given a graph or an equation, is first of all this one. So if you have a graph or you're just given the values of two points, to find the slope you just take the y value of one of the points and subtract the y value of the other ones and then divide that by the difference between the x values. The most important thing is that you don't mix it up. Make sure you have the corresponding x and y values paired up together here and here. So that's the most common mistake that students make on this is they accidentally switch one of those y values. They put the y value from the second one here and the x value from the first one here. Don't do that. Don't mix them up. Make sure you keep them paired up. Now if you're given an equation, the slope is here. The slope is the m. It's whatever number is before the x when you have an equation in this form, which is called slope-intercept form. Now you may be given an equation that's like this and you just need to like look and see what that number is right there, but it may be that the equation is mixed all up and you need to do some adding, some subtracting, some multiplying, dividing to get it in this form. But once you have that y isolated on this side right here, your slope is going to be that value that's in front of the x. Okay, next thing, the third and the fourth thing to know is the equation for the circumference of a circle and for the area of a circle. So the circumference is 2 pi r and area is pi r squared. Now the most common mistake that students make on these ones are mixing them up. They forget which one's circumference and which one is area. The way I like to remember it, if it helps you at all, is think about a square, right? So if we're finding the area of a square, we take the value of one of the sides and we square it. Squaring, what that does, it kind of expands the area. So it works that way similarly with circles. So that's why we have that, it's not why, but it's what you can remember, why we have that r squared value with area, associated with area, where the circumference is a line, really. It's a, the outside, and if we cut it like a ribbon and pull it out, it's just going to be a line. We shouldn't be squaring, expanding the area of that at all. So you will definitely find one, maybe two, maybe three questions on one of these two things. So you want to make sure you remember those as well. Next thing to know is the volume of a cylinder. Now there's a lot of shapes that the ACT will give you the equation on, maybe like the surface area of a pyramid. They're not going to expect you to know and they'll give you that one. They won't give you the one for the cylinder. They'll expect you to know that, so you should have it memorized. Now the way that I remember this is that a cylinder is simply a circle that's been stretched out. So we have the equation for the area of the circle and then we're multiplying it by the height. So we're just taking that circle and we're stretching it out to a certain height. So that's why we are multiplying it by that height and that's our formula for the volume of a cylinder, pi r squared h. And then finally, this is not so much a formula as a mnemonic, but if there's one thing that you should remember or learn about trig is this mnemonic here, SOHCAHTOA, which if you break that down means that sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, 
Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the letters just help you remember these things. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, this applies to right triangles, and I suggest that if you see a trig problem with right triangles that's asking you anything about sine or cosine or tangent, that you just write this down first thing on the problems because the most common mistake that students make here is just mixing it up. They know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, but they'll do the adjacent over hypotenuse value. So just write it down, make it a lot harder on yourself to make a careless mistake here. Just as a quick refresher in case this is new to you or you totally don't remember, so Katoa, basically if we have a triangle like this and the question asks you what is the sine of this angle right here, well you just write down Sokotoa on your sheet and the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be 3 fifths, 3 over 5. If it asks you what the cosine of this angle is, cosine, you wrote down Sokotoa and you would see that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would just be 4 fifths. So that's as simple as that. So even if you haven't even learned trig yet, if you can just learn this, I promise you, you'll be able to get a question or two that's a trig question on the ACT and you can pat yourself on the back for that, but you definitely need to make sure you know that. Okay, so there's a few more formulas that you should know for the ACT and we have a list of all of them, a handy little cheat sheet of formulas to know that's in the link below this video so you can go ahead and check that out if you want some more advanced formulas or a more comprehensive list and then you can also go ahead and check out act.magoosh.com if you want to learn about everything you need to know for the test, all the formulas and lessons and strategies that you need to know for math or anything else and I will see you next Tuesday CT right here.